Flea markets are a great source for wicker, and while many items can be found in good condition, don't dismiss a piece simply because it needs a bit of work. What would this be, like some very thin plywood or something? Um, yeah, but I think it'd be really easy to get off of there. With a little cleaning, painting, or simple handiwork, a seemingly undesirable piece can become a woven treasure. Mark recommends two ways to clean wicker. You can put them in the backyard and take a hose to them. I would say chairs, chaise lounges, little sofas, love seats, that kind of thing. I think it's fine. With this piece, I don't really want to take a hose to it because what's going to happen is if I hose this thing down, then water is going to get trapped down beneath this mirror and moisture is going to rot away the piece. So with this, I am going to use you know a bit of water on this thing, but I don't want to just absolutely saturate it. I'm going to just take my brush and I just run it across the wicker like this. You know, the longer the bristle in there, the stiffer it is, the more that dirt's going to come out. And I'm just using uh, soap and water. Nothing really harsh, nothing really abrasive. Household glass cleaner reveals a nearly perfect mirror. I have some little spots, some little dots that I want to get off of there. Take a little razor blade and just use the flat edge. They just pop right up. Finally, Mark adds a signature shabby chic touch to the vanity drawer. Now I've picked out some paper for this piece, just kind of a muted shade of pink, uh, a reproduction of an older design that Rachel likes. Mark measures and cuts the paper into a square, then uses the drawer itself as a guide to cut the paper to a perfect fit. And the last thing that we do, we take a little bit of uh, natural scent, just to kind of let it run down right along the top. This is actually lemon, has a nice fresh scent when you open that drawer. Painting wicker is a fairly simple process. Some paint, a stiff brush, and a bit of time are all that's required. I'm using a water base paint today. And the brush that I'll be using, it's a little bit stiff because I'm going to need the, the stiffness to get inside the wicker. Mark uses a technique called stippling to thoroughly coat the wicker table. So I put a little paint on my brush, I actually stick it down into the wicker itself, and then kind of move it back and forth. Just a nice thin coat to start out with. If you lay it on there too thick, as you uh, tend to lose the details of the piece, two strands will start to look like one, and you definitely don't want that. Mark has a different approach for painting a rattan bench. I want to distress the piece. And it just gives the uh, illusion of being worn, and it's, it's a nice little touch. We have some nice colors in here. You can see we actually have a little bit of gold up here at the top. We have some green. So what I'm going to do first is put a coat all over the piece, a very light coat. The bench's extremely tight weave has caused the paint to accumulate too heavily. It's really important here that I get my stiff brush in there to stipple that out of there because we don't want that stuff clogging up the piece. After a few hours, the paint is dry and ready for distressing. What I'm using is a 220 sandpaper. It's a really fine sandpaper. And I just want to take off just a, uh, the first layer of that paint. You can see just with just going over it just really lightly there, I'm starting to get a little of that green, a little bit of that gold coming out there. And you don't want it to be too uniform. Break it up. Then I'm going to leave this area alone, possibly. Maybe go over here. Mark wipes the bench down to eliminate any residue and then applies clear coat. It protects the, the, the outside coat. We don't need it as much there, but it also protects the areas that we've just chipped away at. 